Let's talk Tanya for the 16th of Shvat. Yesterday we are saying that um, every sin is ultimately an expression of klipa, of a dezara, idolatry, and therefore all sins are essentially the same. Every single one of them is a rejection of God's unity. The problem is that anyone who knows anything about Judaism knows that there are differences in sins, and some of them are considered biggies, and some of them are not considered as big or as heinous as others. And this is reflected also in, um, in the punishments, not every, the punishment for every mitzvah, whether here in this world, um, by the courts, or in the next world, isn't the same. For some, for some avir, some sins, <clears throat> there's what's called kares, which means the soul is uh, cut off. So how can we say that every avera is the same thing? And although the Alter Rebbe doesn't mention this explicitly over here, it would seem that the same question could be asked also in the other way. We're saying all mitzvahs are the same, they're all an expression of God's unity, but we know that some mitzvahs are considered bigger or more important than others also. And the answer the Alter Rebbe gives is, the difference between one avera and the next is not in the time when the avera is being committed, when the sin is being committed, the difference is in the terms of the after effects. And to understand this, let me give an analogy from marriage. What is marriage? Marriage is essentially one simple point, which is you have two people and each one of them starts out as an I, and they commit to each other. There is no more I. From now on, it's we. And from now on, each spouse is committing that they're considering the others and the other person's feelings, and everything is done within the context of that marriage. Now, there are many moments in marriage, and in terms of the positive, let's say, so there are some, there's the small things that, uh, that one spouse does for the other, and then there are the big things, the monumental things, the huge things. But ultimately, all of them are an expression of one simple point, which is, I am married to you, and we are we at the moment. On the other side, there are times when one spouse or the other will step out of the marriage. What does that mean to step out of the marriage? Anytime that you are inconsiderate to your spouse, you are essentially saying, at this moment, it's not we, it's I, and I'm not taking you into consideration. So whether it's leaving the socks on the floor instead of throwing them into the hamper, whether it's having uh, a temper tantrum screaming at the spouse, whether it's doing something far more serious, whether it's infidelity, each one of them essentially, at the moment when it is being done, it's really the same statement. The statement is, at this moment, I am not married. I have opted out at this moment, opted out of the marriage. Does that mean that every single indiscretion is the same? No. But it's more about the after effects. If you threw the socks on the floor instead of putting it in the hamper, at that moment when you did it, okay, that was, you're out. But the moment after it happens, you're going to be back in. If a spouse does something more serious, the after effects and the damage that it does in the marriage are much more serious, and it's going to take much more effort to fix it up. But that's all about the after effects. Again, at the moment when a person steps out, does it really make a difference what's happening? The essential sin over here is not what's done, but the statement that you are making. The exact same thing is when it comes to Navira, when it comes to a sin. When a person is doing a sin, it doesn't make a difference what it is. It doesn't make a difference whether it's bowing down to a cross or whether it's uh, eating something which isn't kosher, whether it's missing a davening, whether it's uh, not making kiddush, whatever it may be. At that moment, what you're essentially saying is, I am something other than God, and I have autonomy to do whatever I want other than God. That is of a desire. That is idolatry, or worse than idolatry, as discussed in the previous lessons. However, in order to rectify that, and we know the punishments in the Torah are about rectifications, yeah, it depends how much damage was done to the relationship. Sometimes if it's a small avera, so then afterwards, you pick up the pieces, and right away, you return to the service of God and to the relationship. Sometimes, the damage done is so great that it's not so simple to pick up, and you need a much more, uh, you need a much, uh, a much more difficult rectification. So they're both true. Are all of various the same? The answer is yes and no. Yes, in terms of the statement being made, and at the, the idea that at the moment that you're doing an Avera, when a person does an Avera, they are saying, I am something separate from God, which is the essence of idolatry in that area, all Averis are the same. On the other hand, in terms of the after effects, there definitely are differences. With this, we have wrapped up a lot. If you remember, we started off talking about the unity of God, and then we started talking about idolatry. Then what we did was, we said every mitzvah is the unity of God. Now we finished up explaining how every single 
Sin is the embodiment of idolatry. Now we're going to take all that information that we've amassed over the last few chapters, and in the next chapter, we're actually chapter 25, we're going to include this entire topic, and this, with all this information, we're going to understand how the hidden love that every single Jew has can be used and tapped into and leveraged in their every single day in their struggle against the animal soul.